guys, it's your girl Tia, and I'm coming to you with a really quick tutorial. Um, if you guys can see, these are nice little photo canvases that you can have as a newborn gift. Um, even if you were to put a different picture of yourself or different other things, whatever the case may be, um, I think it's a really nice idea. So, um, I actually made two of them already just for uh, myself to have a better idea, whatever the case may be. And then I am going to show you guys how to make one right now. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and open it. Um, I bought these from Michaels. It was uh, on sale, which was awesome because I didn't have to use a 50% or 40% off coupon like three times. But this is it. My husband can show you guys better. So that's it right there. And um, it was actually less than a dollar this time. It was three for the price of one. So I think they're usually about three dollars each or something like that. Two dollars of change. And I got all three of these for only, like I said, uh, less than a dollar each. And then I also have this one, which was also white, just like this, but I painted the whole thing. You guys don't really have to care about the back. This is what's going to be on your wall when you hang it up, or if you put it on a, a shelf or something. But So um, I painted this, and I'm actually going to be using this for this little guy as well, so you guys can have an idea of what we are going to do. So first things first, I'm going to show you guys how to get this to be black. Because <laughs> it wasn't born that way. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to get your paint. Uh, this paint is also at Michael's for less than a dollar. I didn't even unclip it. I just opened it up and poured some out. We don't need a lot because once again, we don't really care about the back. And um, you don't really even have to cover this part, but um, if you have enough, you can. Uh, if you feel like it'll make it more even or make it better for you. When I put my picture on top, that uh, no white is showing at all for any possible reason. I actually have a heater uh, on the floor next to me that I use to keep me warm all the time. I'm actually gonna use that now to get this dry. And um, uh, as I talk to you guys about the rest of the details and uh, get other things working. So the paint that I am using is acrylic paint which dries really fast. I'll show you guys really quick. It's acrylic paint by Craftsmart. Um, you'll find that in the paint aisle at Michaels. The pictures that I uh, got from Walgreens are actually four by four. But what I realized is either the frame or the picture is off by a few centimeters. So what I had to do is basically put the picture up to this and then uh, kind of guesstimate how much I need to cut off. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little white that hangs off here and a little white that hangs off there. But my goal was to get a four by four for each, the picture that I printed from Walgreens and as well as the frame. So that'll be easier, but um, not all manufacturers are true to size. Some things are just a little bit off. Maybe somebody gave me more than four by four. So um, after it dries, I'll be able to put it back on top to measure it. I should have did that first, but it's still fine. Next, uh, while we're waiting on that part to dry, I went ahead and I painted this already. And if you guys can see, it has a bit of a shine because I used a Mod Podge with a gloss finish. I got this from Michaels. This I had for over a year. I even used this for my wedding, my engagement party, everything. This thing has lasted me a long time. But I also got this one from Dollar Tree for only a dollar today. Um, and this one has a matte finish. So if you wanted it to be shiny on the top, kind of like how these are, you can see the reflection possibly um, in light, but these have a glossy finish at the top. You will want it to not be finished with matte unless you want a matte finish. So 
Um, what I'm going to do now is I have the idea to put this in the middle. And in a couple of minutes after that, I'm going to be showing you guys how to put a monogram here and possibly the baby's uh, weight and information on this side. So what I started to do already is I'm just going to guesstimate. It doesn't have to be perfect in the middle, but I do want the size um, going up and down to be just about the same. Um, and I tried to use this little thing that I have with Cricut where I could just slice across, but for some reason it started to bend my Walgreens images, so I just cut it piece by piece. So I kind of put it really close to see uh, how well it is. I'd rather I cut too less than cut too much because you can't go back after you cut too much. And I'm going to put it back and I see there's just a little bit more that could be cut off. So I'm going to go back in and cut a little bit more and I was thinking if I should cut off just a little bit of the space because it's not really necessary but um, I'm not 100% sure so I'll have more space for words or whatnot. So I'm just going to guesstimate. Once again we colored the background black so if a little bit were to show it would kind of uh, just blend in, uh, but you really don't want to cut it. That line doesn't look very straight. There we go. You don't want to cut it too short. So I think that's pretty perfect for me. And I am actually going to cut off just a tad bit to make it more of a square shape. Um, you guys could freehand it like I am. Is that her leg? If it's her leg, I might just leave it. Eh. No, I'm gonna, no, that's not her leg. I'm gonna cut off a little bit. I'm gonna cut off about that much. And then I'm going to be placing it in the center. Just about, just like that. And then her name will be here, and then the other information will be there. So to show you guys that while we are waiting for the image to dry, we'll go ahead and flip it. It dries pretty quick. It's just a, like this part is dry, that part was wet. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit under here. And it doesn't have to be perfect when I, the part that I'm doing now in the middle because it dries clear and we're also going to be doing a clear layer going over it again later with a gloss. Um, I just want to make sure that I get it as much as I like it. Go ahead and fill that in. And you can move it after you put it down a little bit if you feel like you want to center it a bit more. It's not like once you put it down, you can't move it anymore. It's uh, very possible to move it. So pretty much for this part, that's that. And then you guys can see how it kind of goes together with the rest of it. Um, remember that after we're finished, uh, just like we did with these two, we're going to have to do a covering of the Mod Podge as well. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it or if my husband could show you guys, but um, I'm kind of a clumsy artist sometimes I can be. And a little bit of paint gets got here as well as here. So what I have on hand is some alcohol that I can easily use to rub this off prior to me putting the Mod Podge over it. It's clean cut and um, it looks beautiful. So while we're waiting for the bag to dry now, I think I'm pretty good on getting my canvas back. Um, as you guys can see, it's pretty dry. I can touch it. There's just a little bit where a little extra paint got that's still a little wet, but that's fine as well. Oh, I didn't measure it yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. <laughs> Found some raggedy scrap paper somewhere. 
floor. All right, so we're gonna put this down. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the other one and just pretty much try to measure it to size. You could try to do a little bend at the end where you force it down and it kind of like tells on itself about what needs to be cut. You see I'm getting paint on the picture. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll clean it later. Pretty good. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit more here. I guess it's not as even. And sometimes you can tell it's not even if you can put it to the side of it and just cut it up, and it'll keep stopping because it's uneven. So that's perfect. If it's perfectly to size now, we hardly had to cut off uh, not even an inch. So, be mindful of that when you're thinking of your prints at Walgreens or Shutterfly or wherever you decide to go. I'm gonna put enough glue. And I'm gonna actually be using this same one to go over my pictures with the Mod Podge. So, I'm gonna have to wash this. But we can do that last. It's not that important. You want to make sure you put enough glue, but you also want to make sure that it's an even layer so there's no lumps under the picture. Even if it gets on the side once again, it's fine because it dries clear. Fix that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put her pretty little face right on the top. You can adjust it once you put it on and smooth it out. Yeah, once you paint, when you, once you put the Mod Podge, be mindful that it wets the paint all over again. So there's paint on my hand and I know I can wipe it off, but the less I have to clean off, the better. So just be careful with that. So now, once again, we are back to waiting for things to dry. I'm gonna put her there. Move these things over because they're not needed at the moment, but we will be using this really soon to clean her face and to clean her little toes. Now what we're gonna be working on is doing the monogram. And then I'm going to be washing my brush in a few minutes as well. So we can use it again to go over our picture. Now I'm gonna be opening my computer showing you guys the second part of the project. Every project will start off with an awesome Cricut Design Space. And with our Cricut Design Space, we know that we actually have a black canvas. So it'll make it easier when you have white or different color fonts to put on your project. So first thing is first, we're gonna go ahead and use the font that we desire to use. So we will be doing a monogram and I put the link below where you guys can find this monogram. But if you guys want to see different possible styles, you simply go to Pinterest, put in free monogram fonts, and it will take you exactly where you need to go. The font that I chose for this project is font 11, which is the one right here that I am circling. And then you simply come down here and you see, okay, I want number 11. You click it. It takes you to the next location and you click download and from there you will download it on your computer which is what I already did. So now all I have to do is go to my Cricut Design Space and put in the letters that I need. I need the letter A, J as well as F. And the reason why I duplicated is for size purposes and it makes it easier so I don't have to keep going to click text, text, text uh, over and over and over again. 
here, we're going to put a J. And then, last but not least, we're going to put the L. Now, for the font, I don't use the Cricut fonts. I only use fonts from my computer, which would be System. And the one that I downloaded was Monogram KKSC. We're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to open it up. Now, as you can see, it is black because it doesn't know that my background is not. It usually defaults to black, um, but that font is going to be pink. It's kind of difficult to see that that is an A, but in the monogram world, it is. It is an A. I'm going to just see how it would look to make it bold. And then let's turn it pink again and see if that makes a difference in how it that makes a big difference in how the ink looks, so I love that. I'm going to just go ahead and make it all bold. So I'm going to come, change the font, make it bold, and then make it pink. And then one more time, change the font, and make it pink. Oh, still regular. It's going to turn back black. Defaults to black. Now, so we have our A, we have our J, which is going to be bigger. We have our L. And you want those letters to connect. Now, someone um, once asked me, do I attach my letters or do I weld them? Usually, I would simply attach them, but in this case, um, let's learn together and see how well this goes. So when it comes to monogram, I think welding it is pretty nice because now you have the letters stuck together and it fits perfectly. The only thing is, uh, I think that I could possibly scale it a little better. I would like my L to be bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to make my L a little bigger. And then I'm going to re-weld it. And now it looks like simply one beautiful um, letter. The initials together. And I see that I could have it to about 3 inches. But no more. Um, due to the space that I have on my canvas left. And over this I am going to put her So I'm going to go ahead and put the name, but we're going to change the font to Mono Knight. Something simple. And we're going to let it know that we're going to be printing without a white because our canvas is black. And then look how beautiful that is. It just flows together. Now. We're not going to attach this, reason being is because once you attach it, it'll think that it's one thing and it'll all turn the same color. So we're just going to leave it together. And I am going to go ahead and duplicate this. Duplicate this and I'm going to change this to... Change this to the date. Way too huge. I only have space for three. So we're gonna make it two point five. Two point five would be great. And then for the weight and inches. You guys can see there's so much space in between. I can't stand that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze it together. By doing that, to take away all the extra space, you shrink the letter spacing. But I'm just going to uh, do it individually. So I'm going 
take my tin out too. I'm just gonna have everything separate. Mm -hmm. As I've showed you guys before, um, basically this is the the Cricut part where you're ready to assemble everything. And right here I have my pink vinyl and I have my white vinyl. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to measure four inches. Four. Well, really, all I need. Is two by four, which will be perfectly great. So I'm going to go down two inches. That's the best way to do this. inches by four inches. Alright, so all I have to do is carry out that cut. as much paper as possible. All right, so we have our two by four. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna pull out your mat. And you're gonna put this on, oh, I dropped it. You're gonna go ahead and put this on your paper. Jesus loves imperfect people. Now, I'm kind of used to putting everything on backwards, but in this case, we're not doing an iron on, so I have to make sure that I take it off and put it on vinyl. Now, 
with it being on vinyl, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it know it doesn't need to be mirrored. Everything is great. I'm going to click continue and it's going to tell me to go ahead and load my mat. And mat is loaded. And I'm ready to go. That, I'm going to go ahead and get my transfer sheet ready. Alright you guys, so I actually made a mistake. It's very small, impossible to ignore, but I may end up fixing it. I don't know if you guys can see it. You probably can't, but my O was cut a little bit on the one. I may just be able to leave the one or the O off altogether. What I'm gonna have to do now is take out the little parts.
you guys so this is the finished product if you look closely everything has dried you can see a bit of the strokes from the paintbrush but I think it still looks nice I think it looks very presentable and beautiful so if you guys want to make this you can go ahead and make it if you guys want to possibly uh, have the opportunity to buy it just let me know and then I'll uh, direct you guys to my Etsy shop but thank you so much for watching I hope that you guys love this tutorial and please don't be afraid to like, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate it. Bye.